This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, what's up guys? So we're heading to the airport and we're heading out to California. So right now we're heading over to Chicago first and eventually we will be in San Diego. So we're going on a trip and we're gonna do a transport trailer across the country that's gonna take care of the climate control for a sensitive piece of equipment that's gonna be used into outer space. All right, so now we are in Chicago. One more stop. All right, guys, so we just got out of the airport. I'm waiting on uh, my guy from NASA to pick me up. He uh, so happened to be driving by, which is awesome. Drink. It is warm in here. You just have auto, that's all your options are. Got my basic stuff here. Anyway, right, so let's take a quick look through the lobby here. Do got a Starbucks here, which is kind of interesting. Whatever the heck that is. Yep, that's what we're doing. We're getting ready to go eat. So we just got done eating here. This was really good. Uh, seafood and stuff, really nice, cool looking location. All right guys, so it says 6.39, but in my time zone, it technically is about three hours earlier, so it's like 9.40. So we woke up a little early, uh, I don't know, like four o'clock, and so we are ready to go. They're my basics. I didn't want to bring anything too major because I didn't want to get lost in transit. Let's go see what we can do. All right, so, We've got the tools over here. Let's go over here and get this thing prepped up and ready to go. The heating cooling units there are underneath the tarp. Uh, one of the duck uh, connections came off. This big cable goes underneath the trailer here and then goes over to the generators, which, you know, they're back here. So we've got to look at these. This obviously connects to those there and the returns here, which Probably wasn't the greatest return design. There's no scoop in there, but people that built this wasn't uh, HVAC guys. So we're just getting some of this stuff undone. Uh, constant run compressors. Got filters here on the front. Some Air Rover environmental control systems. There's your evaporator. This is the piece that came off, which is this piece right here. You can see whoever welded this did a very poor job. This here's the reason why I broke. There's no gussets, no bracing. It's just a butt weld in all reality. We can make this thing fit on there. It's so if you need to shut one off, you can close the other one. Now, if they're both running, it's not a big deal. And there's our Cat5 cable and stuff. We hook up to the router. Different gases we can hook up to it to purge into the, into the container. This is insulated. On the front here, we've got a sight glass, man to reset, circuit breaker, high and low pressure taps. It's got electric strips on the inside. Thermostat and stuff is, this is how you're controlling your humidity with the Johnson control. It's pretty simple. Everything pops off pretty easy. So if you need to get into it to work on it. What I had originally was the receiver had leaked on these. We got that all fixed up. Ended up replacing the one and on the other one we ended up getting the right wrench to tighten it up and got that going. I got permission to show all this. So that's why I didn't say much about it before. Won't go into a lot of details as to how I got involved with this, but so on the generators, these were serviced a while back when we were doing all of our other stuff. Not seeing anything bad on that. As you guys know, I do regular gas generators. I have never done diesel, but the way they work is pretty much exactly the same. So they unhook the batteries, which we're gonna need to make sure all that works. Figure I might as well look at it while I'm at it. No sense of finding out in the middle of Arizona or wherever that things uh, have got issues. Go ahead and get this one in there. This top here completely lifts up and off of here. You can see the lifting points there. There's your breaker box, stuff like that. I'm thinking about 
we'll go ahead and run these, make sure that there's no problems or anything. Then we can go and see if we can get that piece fixed. This is special tape, it ain't like packing tape. So right there's the motor, some of the sensors, condensate trap, all that happy jazz. Pretty much just a package unit. A lot of times the military use this, I think, for camp cities and stuff like that. So what do we do when we get here? When it absolutely, positively must not have a leak, there's what we grab. We're just going through and just double check, make sure none of this vibration and stuff cause any issues. Uh, some of this here, sometimes you're better off just to let it vibrate like that. We usually like running it like you've seen in some of it in split vinyl tubing. Works really good. But for the most part, just kind of going through and seeing if there's any major leaks. Then we'll go ahead and do the regular checks and make sure that we don't have any uh, problems. Got the power hooked up here and there. He had to unhook it when he put those tarps on there. Got everything opened up. Uh, we're about ready to run this thing. What's crazy is how when you go down in here, they ran Parker hoses on everything. They do got, like I said, sight glass there. The part that was leaking the last time was down here on this receiver. And it was pretty bad. I mean, it leaked oil everywhere. I had to add oil to it. Not picking anything up on that. Got micro channel here. And then you've got, like I said, some more hoses. Quarter inch lines, just more leak points way I'll look at it. Not gonna reach down there with the old H10. Not gonna reach it. You have to get your whole body down in there. Nothing major on that that I see. Fan feels good. Turn her on. Initializing. 12.3 volts, 75 degrees, zero PSI, 109 hours. <laughs> Make sure this one works too while we're at it. Go to manual. Manual. Fifty-seven, two hundred twenty-four hours, sixty hertz, eighteen hundred, two hundred seven, two hundred eight. All right. Well, we don't need both of them running. So go ahead and focus on our main thing here. Okay, practically go deaf. So now we just gotta turn these on. Now on these, we can turn on circuit breaker. Turn on circuit breaker. Come down to thermostat. Last time I used a uh, piece of tape to hold that up. Turn that one on, reheat's off. Now you can only run one of them in reheat, which is electric reheat. Uh, generator can't handle all of it, unless you ran each one individually off of it. I thought we were only gonna run one at a time, but it appears that we're gonna run probably both air conditioners at the same time. Let's go ahead and put it on cooling and let's see what this puppy dog does. Cold air and hot air, imagine that, right? Go over here to our sight glass. Can you see it? Sure you can. This is running on 134A. So it does run really low. I did not tinker dinkle with the uh, TXV at all. Superheated the compressor is not bad. It's kind of on you know, the high enough side where it needs to be at. But to watch the evaporative temperature, it's pretty low. Lower than what I figured it should be. But been like that for how long? So didn't change anything. My bag of tricks here. I brought some universal contactors, transformer strap, some wire, more contactors, relays, and my gauges. Okay, we know it's about 75 degrees out here. All right, so running uh, 112 degrees out here and 30 degree evaporator temperature. Very little load on it. 74 degrees, it's running about 35, 40 degrees over ambient. We've got air filters on the condenser. Everything looks good there. Sight glasses look fine. Brought my basic thermometer. Now we're running full speed here. We can slow that blower down if we want. Now she'll really start going down cold. So if you want to really dehumidify, slow that turkey down. I don't know what they run normally. So there's your frequencies right there. 
and like I said, it just cycles that solenoid on and off. There's 58. Let's see what our pressures have done now. Suction pressure's down to 28 degrees and 110 on the head. You know, like they say, what you do to one side, you do to the other. You lower the suction, you lower the head a little bit. That made a hell of a difference. All right, let's see what we're coming in at. We'll set this thing up for maybe a 15 degree, 18, 18 degree drop, something like that. We'll see how that does, if we have any problems with it or not. So we've got both of them running. Let's go back and see what our generator looks like with no, no reheat on. So yeah, we're running right in there at 44 amps. We're only about 45% capacity. Not doing bad. I can see it's sweating pretty good, so we're removing humidity. That reheats on, so the temperature came up. 74 and 59, that's 14 degrees right there at that speed. Yeah, we do have the reheat on. So we're still cool and just not as terrific -y. Yeah, look at my trap there. That's doing its job, holy crap. And it's pulling that out at full speed. So let's go back here and see if reheat's working on the other one. Yeah, about the same amperage. It's doing it. Just report this one time before I take it off. We're running 31 and a half degrees on that, so it's not doing bad. I already bled my hoses all the way out through the, the center port. So we're gonna go ahead and dump that back in. That way we don't lose anything. Okay, this is the other one. Running 31 degree on it and 120 on the condensing temperatures. Uh, this is a variable speed. Well, it's not variable speed, but it does have a variable speed controller on it. Um, trying to remember where it's at. It's somewhere in there. I think it's off discharge temperature. At least I think it's this one. I worked on two different ones of these. Everything looks about normal on it too. And that's what the speed even slowed down a touch. I went ahead and attached this thing to the suction line. I brought wire ties that have the eyelets on it. So if I need to attach it to something, I can. And then if I want, I can cut them off like I'm doing. Like I said, best way is to wrap it in that uh, split tubing. There we go. It's not gonna vibrate. Good thing we took a look here. Look at that. Crappy weld joints. Cracked all through there and all through there. This one here is doing pretty good too. Lots of sweating going on, which means we're gonna be dehumidifying. I'm gonna see if I can find a welding shop around here and see if it's possible to get that welded. If not, well, we got the old ones, which are nothing more than just a collar going right there and with no damper in it. 17 degree drop. I'm gonna leave that fan slowed down a little bit too. Looking good. All right, so my guy's in there doing his thing inside the building or it's restricted area. So I came back and got my charger so that I could charge my phone, which also gave me Android Auto, which really made it a lot easier to use this vehicle. So what I did is I went and tried to find a fab shop to fix the aluminum dampers and the guy tells me it's gonna get all warped if they fix it. And I'm thinking, if you're good at TIG welding, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So that's my hotel right there. This is going downtown. Basically, I can see the mall from across the road or whatever, and from what I see, it looks like you can pretty much just walk right over to it. I mean, it might be within a mile or so. What else is there to do today? My work's done until we take off, and uh, I might as well enjoy myself a little bit. I mean, I'm basically there as a, uh, a HVAC EMT to uh, revive it if it has problems. I mean, it's just one of them things that shouldn't have problems. We checked it, it's working, and uh, we're uh, there if they need us. I can see right now, I should probably switch to the other side of the road. So anyhow, yeah, we're just gonna walk right underneath this. Yeah, I've done similar things like this in Chicago and New York. You go from that rat hole there of total trash to some of the higher end places. So now I'm looking for a Shake Shack. I decided to leave them all, see if we can uh, find one of those. Kind of crappy sign though. If you wouldn't have known to look for it, you wouldn't have found it. Not bad. Made in America Cup. Anyhow, we just gotta walk back to the uh, hotel and we're gonna meet up with Chris here in a little bit and we'll go eat out. So we're walking back, got my shake. 
And look at this busy ass intersection. So now we're gonna head over to Best Buy on our way back to the uh, hotel. So I tried that out yesterday and that was really good. Um, little taco stand on wheels. I didn't realize how close I was to all this stuff. They seem like they really like concrete here. Everything's concrete, solid concrete. I don't know if it's because of the earthquake stuff or what, but you haven't got to experience that yet. Well guys, that concludes our walk around the town of where my hotel is here in downtown San Diego. Yeah, look what I got. It's not a, not a uniform shirt. And look at these big honking donking things. They got bunches of these. Uh-oh, stray pussy running around. You can track his number, which he probably unidentified it. 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 comes right up. 100 meter motor yacht. 150 million, dude. Wow. That is a beautiful oh. shot. Look at that, dude. Yeah. That is just like beautiful. Peasants. Get away from us, peasants. <laughs> So we got to get up about 4.30 area, be down in the lobby by 4.45, 5 o'clock, and we're taking off. Got things ready to go, um, all in a pile. Like I said, it was cool seeing Chris tonight. Had a great meal with him. That was a lot of fun. Got a new hat and new sweatshirt, which I, it's my first one on that. And I got a new shirt too, which is awesome. So thank you, Chris. Uh, definitely come in handy for the trip and at home. See you guys in the morning. All right, got literally Bob's crane service there to lift up the box. And then I think they're gonna back this thing into the building. So this is the tape we're using. Contains no silicone, it's really sticky and it's stretchy. It's supposed to not leave any residue either. So there's all the uh, sensors and stuff they've got. Make sure that there's not over abundance of vibration, temperature, cargo there is under the static resistant coating. Keep contaminants out of it, stuff like that. Really? Yeah, instant the original. <laughs> All right, so we've got about everything ready to go. We got the uh, ducks all hooked up, which we made sure we used some of the tape stuff on all of it. Got all them, put a little extra tape around some of the different clamps. They got those offset clamps. I don't, some of them are really stretched. Got the uh, different ducks on there. All right, so we're just going through and making some final checks, making sure everything's okay. This one here is running. But the solenoid, it's on constant run. The solenoid shuts off, but the uh, compressor continues to run. The John's control here is what's controlling. Our humidity, I've got it set for 55. Set this one for 68. The other one's set for 70. It's 72 inside there. Can't count that humidity there because that's an outside sensor. I think we're about ready to roll. Tape stuff actually works pretty good as a band-aid. I just kind of threw it around the old thumbaroo thumb there. And everything's tight and tidy up here. I said some of always gonna put a strap on this so it wouldn't shake. Which these are not insulated, but I forget. You gotta be real careful with the different types of insulation.
few problems here as you can see. We're like backed up forever to all the way to forever.